Hey there YouTube, Super Brain AK here. And well, uh, I got another thing in the mail today. And well, it is a little USB uh, tester. Now the other one that I got, this big behemoth, is not so much for USB. I mean, sure you could solder on a plug and stuff, but this is specially designed for USB because it has USB plug here, a USB output plug, and then it's got one of those um, basically basically one of these guys that has its own little load inside. See, it's got the little, I think that's a tip 122. I'll show you guys the circuit board in a second. But yeah, and two knobs, and it's got a bunch of ports. Basically, every single type of port, besides big, gigantic, regular size USB B. So let's go head on over to the product page. Alright, so 35 watt constant current double adjustment electronic load. Oh, and yes, this was a combo with one of those quick charge uh, trigger boards. I'll show you that in a second. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that's Qualcomm capable. But, I'm sure other people do, so if I can, I can test their power supplies. And when I ever do get something, then I can. So yeah, uh, let's scroll down. So yeah, 1891 on AliExpress. Um, was it the eTorch Technology Manufactory Company? I don't know what manufactory is. A manual factory? Yeah, Chinese labor. Good hoorah. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, this is... The one that I got is... What? The latest update? That's that yellow text there. Uh, the fan doesn't turn off all the way. It does slow down and speed up. Um, based on the temperature of the transistor. And yeah. So it's not really... It'll add power to it. 170 milliamps. Uh, when the fan's running, so can't quite use it to accurately test things with the little uh, bypass port or something. But yeah, it's mainly just to uh, test the test the power supply over the type A connector or test your various cables. Was it mini, type C, micro, and iPhone? is the lightning test your cables and also you can just put uh, a little that's a little terminal block there let's show that so that way you can um, connect some wires to it just to I don't know if you're discharging something that just has wires so yeah that's it on the project page. Um, let's see, 35 watts and where's its stuff? There you go, 35 watt, um, 1 to 25 volts, 0.1 to 4.5 and amps. And yeah. So, let's do something with it. All right. So, what I've got is, I've got my ISO bar, 
which is a noise filter surge suppressor. Basically just two outlets on a cord with a switch. Then I've got my Wheat Energy uh, meter, and that's running here. And I've got my Anchor, Anchor 18 watt. Uh, this is the dummy one. It doesn't have the quick charge stuff. It just has an Apple and an Android port, but that's fine. So its output is rated 3.6 amps. So let's plug this guy in. Switch it on. And there we go. So you may be able to hear that got the fan running. I don't know if you can see. Uh, yeah. Let's, is that in the right setting? Yeah. I can read the voltage, current, and the temperature. So, let's spin up the course adjust. Alright, let's go up to one amp. These are very, uh, very quick to react, that's for sure. So, we've got uh, wattage. There we go. Five watts in, six, or 6.3 watts in from the mains, and 5.14 watts out. Oh, by the way, if you do set the knobs all the way to zero, you can see that's the current probably only from the fan, because I don't know how else you would uh, be able to test the uh, other circuit sort of stuff, because your circuit's reference has to be the minus side of the current shunt. But I'll probably go into looking at the circuit a whole lot, lot better. But yeah, so I can spin this up. That is two amps, three amps, five, three point six, and hey, three point seven, three point eight. All right, voltage just dropped to 3.4. And you can notice the uh, kind of all the voltage is dimming out there. So yeah, 3.74, almost 3.8 amps before it starts current limiting. Let's get it down to 3.7. There we go. Look at the temperature, 45, 46 C. So yeah, the actual temperature measure on these little guys. Same one on sort of these. That's just ambient temperature. It's actually measuring the temperature of the heat sink. That's actually pretty smart. So yeah. How many watts is that? 18 and a half. So yeah, my little anchor dumb charger is uh, putting out its rated spec. So that's 18 and a half out, 23.15 in. So yeah, I did that on the calculator earlier and that's 95% efficient. Awesome. So, I guess that's that. We'll switch it off. Hmm. Okay. Let me turn the currents down. And turn it back off. Did you see that? A little flicker.
Yeah. So, yep, it did it again. Did it twice. That's interesting. So, yeah. You can test your power supplies with it. So, before I make it too long, I'm going to check out the build quality. So, I'm going to pause and pull it apart. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit of perspex on the bottom. And unfortunately, these screws do not recess or anything. So if you put it flat on something, the screws kind of protrude. And then it's got these little standoffs. And yep, two little standoffs. And there's the circuit there. Which isn't too bad. It's got a bunch of little diodes. This is the uh, independent power input, which is a micro B, same as this one, but this is on the load side. This will just power its circuit, probably the fan too. That way you're not uh, pulling current through the current shunt, which is right there and pulling power from the USB load to run the fan and the circuit and stuff. So I'm not sure how it switches between the two. It's probably just whichever one has the highest voltage, which might interfere with Qualcomm if it's running at 20 volts going into it. Well, you're never going to have 20 volts going from that. So whichever one's the highest voltage it'll pull the current from. I'm not sure exactly if that's how that works, but I'm pretty sure that it is, because I don't see much fanciness going on. So, what have we got here? Looks like a little buck converter chip, capacitor, diode, inductor. That looks like a buck converter circuit. However, if you look, see that little inductor there? He's not really sitting very flush, is he? He's a little bit cattywampus. Same with that diode. So I'll have to heat those guys up and put them flush to the board. And yeah, solder quality isn't the greatest. I think over there, especially on these ground terminals, I can get to focus on those. They're lacking in a bit of solder, especially on this micro USB or mini B. There you can see the rings for the ports there. So I'll touch those up. That way the ports don't fall off if I'm plugging things in. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a buzzer course fine button to get through the modes uh, USB A input USB A output and voltage for independent voltage was that Apple Lightning uh, micro type C and mini B and terminal block power input so yeah big old fan. Not bad. Uh, be doing some uh, get quick cleanup on solder and uh, flux residue, kind of like over here, mostly. And yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll show you how to test cables with this thing. Because I already showed you how to test the power supply. Just run it up till the voltage starts dropping. So, see you in the next video.